Hello there, my fellow professional hitman, and welcome to another video on Warhammer 40k lore. I think that most of you will probably agree that it has been a very long time since I started a proper new lore series on the channel. The truth is, I've already started topics regarding most of the lore aspects of 40k, but of course there are some exceptions as well. And today we shall finally get started on one of these exceptions, a brand new faction for the channel, in the form of the official Assassinorum. Now, this is not gonna be an extremely long series, but I do estimate somewhere between 5 to 10 videos. As we usually do when approaching something new, today we shall have an overview of these fellows and a bit of their history. Do stand till the end as well, and you can vote on influencing future videos. I am your host, the Hidden Blade GDN for today, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Imperial Assassins are the hidden weapons brandished by the High Lords of Terra. They can be the murderers of kings and false messiahs, downfall to the rebels and traitors across the stars. Once an agent has been dispatched, he or she is relentless and nigh on inevitable as time goes by. Every facet of their impeccable training pushes them into finishing a single objective. Although the temples of the official Assassinorum are shrouded in absolute secrecy, all men of influence fear the shadow that they cast, for their agents can be the Emperor's justice made manifest. In a realm the size and scope of the Imperium, it can be very common for some planets to escape the vigilance of the High Lords. As communication and travel is at the mercy of the currents of the warp, a population can go 10 years, 20 years, or even a century without contacting the Imperium proper. It is indeed quite a fragile system, and given the monotonous and overwhelming work of much of Imperial life anywhere, it is a system that has seen many worlds fall into slavery or heresy. When left to fend for themselves against a hostile galaxy, it is not difficult for the citizens of a planet to eventually harbor the seeds of corruption. A world may very easily fail to pay Imperial tithes, or allow psychic containment routines to fail, or even fall under the law of an unauthorized planetary governor. Some of these rulers just crave independence from the dictates of the Administratum, the Ecclesiarchy, and the galaxy ruled by twelve faceless figures on behalf of the Emperor. Regardless of whether this new leader is benevolent or tyrannical, they almost always pursue their goals with violent retribution. Although his or her rule may prosper in the short term, rumors of their disobedience will eventually reach the Adepta of the Empire. Sometimes this results in open warfare, but just as often it can be resolved by more covert methods. Things like coercion, bribery, threats, blackmail or murder are all tools in the arsenal of those supervising the realm of humanity. For this objective, the Imperium has developed many institutions to take full advantage of these weapons. Ancient organizations that trace their history back to the Great Crusade and the birth of the Imperium. And one of these organizations is none other than the official Assassinorum. The Imperial Assassins are capable of changing the destiny of a world with a simple pull of a trigger. Where the length of the Emperor's range needs to be made clear, a Vindicari sniper will put a bullet into the target's head, even when the individual is surrounded by followers and guards. If the treasonous creed has been extended to an entire organization or even military unit, an Eversor will be released in its place, a biologically enhanced berserker who will massacre dozens or even hundreds to reach the target he has come to kill. If the action requires more subtlety, an agent of the Calidus Temple will be sent. In these cases, it is practically impossible to detect the presence of these shape-shifting killers until the job is done. If the target is a psychic, one of the scarce and terrifying Culexus will be sent to hunt them down, beings with a strange emptiness instead of a soul, also known in secretive circles as pariahs or untouchables. The weapons of the assassins can range from simple knives and clubs to neural shatters and phasic swords, 
which can pierce through both armor and force fields. Even when unarmed, the agents are lethal opponents. Each one is extensively trained in unarmed combat, and they are more than capable of breaking through the resulting chaos following a killing. Returning to their masters, they are then extensively questioned and examined, before being given a brand new mission to complete. In this way, an assassin is locked in a constant cycle of assassination, covering the entire breadth of the Imperium reinforcing the fragile chain of the imperial government even when the end times at the end of the 41st millennium shattered them. Once upon a time, when the emperor spoke his famous declaration during the early years of the Great Crusade, a number of his loyal servants met, eager to help enact those dreams of uniting humanity across all the settled worlds of the galaxy. These men and women were highly skilled in the crafts of stealth and subterfuge, and also highly accomplished in the arts of death. They hunted down those that would bring ruination to the Emperor's plan for human betterment. They all acted in secrecy, preferring not to receive praise from the Emperor for their actions, for they considered themselves unworthy of such attentions among the great sacrifice and destruction caused by the Great Crusade. They carried out their executions silently, moving unseen from world to world in the wake of the Emperor's conquest ensuring that the promises made to the Imperium by rulers newly brought into compliance were not abandoned, that newly installed planetary governors remained loyal, and that treaties and pacts were enforced. In time, these loyal servants realized that they could not hide from their own deaths forever, and that their skills had to be passed on to a new generation if the work was to continue. And thus, they revealed their identity and existence to the Emperor himself. The Emperor saw, with a bit of sorrow, the necessity for their existence, and the terrible duty that they had taken upon themselves, and, eventually, he was pleased. Grand temples were constructed, and the most skillful and deadly of youths were sought out to train at them. And thus was the official assassinorum made in secret, and the names like Calidus, Venenum, Vindicare, Culexus, Eversor, or Vanus, were forever immortalized. Only the strongest survived their training, and in turn they passed on their skills to others. New skills were learned and new temples of death were founded later. The arts of blade, pistol, poison or garrote were owned in every aspect conceivable. And so it was that there was no world in the galaxy beyond the Emperor's rule, no enemy beyond his wrath. During their early history, all six of the main Assassinorum temples, known at the time as Clades, were located on Terra. Each clade was led by an official known as the Director Primus. The official Assassinorum proper was created during the Great Crusade in the early 31st millennium under the stewardship of Malkador the Sigilite, Regent of Terra. He also served as the first overall leader of the organization with the title of Grand Master of Assassins, of course under the command of the Emperor. The assassins of the Six Clades were then tasked by the Grand Master and their founding directors Primus with carrying out the Imperium's goals in special circumstances. That was especially when unleashing the full military power of the Imperium would be either too costly or too counterproductive. The Assassinorum Clades came into their own during the Horus Heresy, however, when they were charged with eliminating the rebel Arch-Douchebag Horus, and other leaders of the forces of Chaos. These missions only met at a time with limited success, as in they killed a lot of people but not Horus himself. In fact, trying to kill Horus with assassins is a very interesting story in the novel called Nemesis. However, after the Wars of Vindication that took place after the death of High Lord Van Dyer in the Age of Apostasy, a renegade Calidus assassin named Tsiz Jarek attempted to assassinate the Grand Master himself. After some terrible atrocities that were precipitated within the Imperial Palace itself, the assassin temples were split up and spread across the galaxy. That was mostly to ensure that should one of them fall to alien influence or heresy, or some good old-fashioned human corruption, the others would stay untainted. Similarly, a hidden order was implemented known as the Ordo Sicarius. 
whose sole duty was to monitor the official assassinorum. Their power was drastically limited. Important assassinations could only be performed after receiving a two-thirds vote from the Senatorum Imperialis. All assassins were to give detailed accounts of their mission's activity, subject to inquisitorial inspection at any given time. Last but not least, all assassins, outside of the Eversor Temple, were to undergo regular psycho-indoctrination under the scrupulous eyes of the Inquisition if deemed necessary. The head of the office remained still the Grand Master, who by tradition and due to the power of his organization is also one of the High Lords of Terra. The ranks of the official assassinorum also include a lot of auxiliary personnel along with astropaths or navigators, and many other similar servants. Although these individuals are not murderers themselves, they do spend their entire lives within the organization and have no contact with the outside world. Because the Officio is pretty much as secret as the Inquisition itself, it is not uncommon for these organizations to work together. Some Inquisitors are even known for organizing assassin profession training for their death cult assassins from their entourage, transforming these already highly effective murderers into even more deadly assassins. Even if you take them one at a time, over the course of the entire Imperial history, the agents of the Assassinorum have killed millions and millions of people. However, their tactics greatly differ from the galaxy-wide slaughter brought about by the Imperial Guard or the Space Marines. Each death they bestow upon the enemies of the Imperium is a carefully crafted link in the chain binding the realms of humanity together. Although every one of these skills is extensively documented in the appropriate Temple's data crypts, only a very small number of the actions have entered the legends of the Imperium, known by few outside the halls of the High Lords themselves. For the poll of today, you get to choose between two rather broad subtopics of this topic. Option A is more history on the faction, maybe even including some famous assassinations, and option B is an overview of the temples themselves prior to talking about each one individually. To vote, simply write down your choice in the comments below. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the dreaded and secretive Official Assassinorum for today. I am sorry it took such a long time to get started on these people, and I hope you enjoyed the rest of the series as it'll slowly trickle onto the channel. If you're curious, future videos will include, like I said, more of the history and famous slash infamous actions of theirs, detailed videos on each major temple, and probably something on their gear and weapons as well. Now, you probably heard about the organization before, but what are your general thoughts on them? Do share any opinions or questions, if you have any, in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video or found it informative, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you an awesome healthy day. The Emperor Protects.